And then Professor Yuva Rao suddenly came up with this idea, why are we taking baby steps? We should think big. We should go to much longer distance. And then this opportunity came in, the Lagrangian one mission, the entire country, all the scientific institution got very much highly motivated. There are multiple payloads were then proposed. So eventually now we have a Lagrangian one observatory class mission. And as you heard from my colleagues, that it is a multi-wavelength observatory. So that's very important to have the shorter wavelength coverage from the space. And in addition, the ground-based observations are also important. So a combination of the ground-based telescope and the space-based platform is very, very important. And since you asked about the question about the, you know, how Aditya in the overall heliophysics uh, research uh, uh, within the international scenario, we only have three uh, an spacecraft around Lagrangian one point, from primarily from NASA and ESA. So I think, again, this is a, a fantastic achievement from India. If you could reach L1 uh, with the full observatory class mission, it will really open a new window altogether. So I think this is a great opportunity, and we are all looking forward. And as I mentioned, probably we will request that, you know, a better ground-based facility. We have already projected a National Large Solar Telescope project from the ground. I think this is now high time. We have a very nice uh, ground-based telescope also to complement the capabilities of Aditya L1. Thank, Thank you. you very much, sir. Indeed, it's a very great opportunity. And now we move on to Dr. V Vipin K. Yadav. So you're in charge of the magnetometer. What is the contribution of magnetometer to Aditya program? Uh, yeah, uh, you see the magnetic field measurements are very crucial uh, in, in space and especially at L1 point. Uh, what we are going to measure with magnetometer is uh, the interplanetary magnetic field that is coming all the way from sun and towards the earth. So uh, typically these values at L1 point are around 5 to 10 nanotesla. But these values increases whenever there is an extreme solar event such as the coronal mass ejection or say a solar magnetic storms. Now these uh, uh, events are crucial to monitor the near earth space weather because these can have an effect on the life on earth. Uh, if you remember Quebec there was an event when the power lines were snapped few years ago. That was because of an extreme solar uh, event. So to keep an eye on the surroundings of uh, Earth, we need these measurements. And apart from that, uh, for solar wind observations also, uh, these measurements will be uh, crucial. Thank oh. you. Thank you very much, sir. So now we move on to Dr. Anuj Nandi. So uh, what is the importance of solar flares and the impact in heliospheres? And how does Aditya L1 contribute to all of this? Uh, good afternoon viewers, uh, as my colleagues already pointed out the importance of this mission uh, and the instruments about. So the thing is, as you know that solar Vehicle flares are the energetic and explosive energy release wall, in few seconds to minutes time scale and it is order of 10 to 27 arcs to 10 to 32 arcs. Now the thing is, these solar flares, uh, why it is important as because these solar flares actually tells the dynamics and activity in the sun. So the thing is, what there are two instrument, unique instruments built by URO Satellite Center that is going to cover the solar flares from 1 kV to extremely high energy hour 200 kV. And we know that visible sun is only 6000 degree Kelvin temperature, whereas the outer sun face of the sun is million degree Kelvin. So the thing is, why there is disparity? So I think these two instruments, along with the other two instruments, VLC and SUIT, we are going to address uh, the, this million dollar questions as well as why there is difference. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. And now I'd like to uh, go back to uh, Dr. Anil Bharatwaj. So uh, there are many satellites that are sent to other, uh, the, uh, the space by other nations. So what makes Aditya L1 different from these satellites? Well, that's a very good question because uh, first of all, let me again tell you that India will be the third or Israel will be the third space agency to have a mission at L1 point. And I just mentioned that it is multi-wavelength, multi-instrument, and multi-direction. And it measures particle, field, and radiations. So you don't have such kind of satellites existing at all point so far and currently. That makes Aditya L1 absolutely unique because we are going to measure remotely, in situ, and particles and fields. I was also mentioning about multi-direction and that is coming from the aspects payload which stands for Aditya Solar and Particle Experiments. 
and this is going to measure particles ranging from 100 EVs going to several MEVs, which is essential for us to know because when the CMEs are happening or the uh, sun is quite angry, the plasma which is coming out from the sun ranges from several EVs to several MEVs and therefore we should know in what direction the plasma is coming and whether the plasma is getting accelerated in between when it comes from sun towards earth and therefore there is a multi-directional information which is available from the aspects payload because it consists of two sensors, Swiss and STEP essentially giving you in two different energy bands and therefore we'll be able to quantify the CME, CIRs and all the processes which is happening on the sun which gives out coronal mass ejections. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much sir for your remarks and now finally we move on to the principal scientist Dr. Sankar Subramaniam. So how does India, how does the Indian science community seek to capitalize on ISRO space capabilities, especially these observatory missions like AstroSpat and Aditya L1? Yeah, uh, <clears throat> so now uh, ISRO has established that uh, it has a capability to uh, uh, send observatory class missions anywhere in the interplanetary medium. Um, ISRO also is developing capability for small satellite missions uh, uh, like NanoSat, uh, CubeSat as well as the small satellite capability. And that is something which uh, especially a heliophysics community could utilize it because we can, at a low cost, we can launch many more such instruments which are essential for heliophysics uh, community here in India. So, That's and also the mean. big bigger mission takes its own uh, uh, life cycle because it requires technologies to be developed for, uh, for a bigger missions. So in between these big missions, if we capitalize on these small uh, satellite missions, and that will uh, enhance the uh, um, uh, science capability of our country to the next uh, level. And uh, as you know, the science and technologies are always synergized. As the technology improves, your science improves. Uh, when I started my career in solar physics, I started with a uh, photospheric magnetic field. Now we are in a position where we can do coronal magnetic field uh, with Aditya L1, which was not feasible when I was doing my PhD. So similarly, as we move on and as the technology starts to improve, we would be able to generate much more uh, capable instruments much more uh, compact instruments which will enable us to do much more science what, than what we can currently do. So we look forward to capitalize on ISRO's capabilities both at the large scale as well as, as, well as at the small scale uh, instruments and also its capability for developing new technologies in the near future. Uh -huh.